Yeah, it was like totally a graphics driver thing. Oh, I didn't see it there. Welcome back. The Gomic Wolf Plus Super Mario Storm. We're not ready to go in there yet. I mean, technically we are, because that's a 20 star door. But, I'll, I'll, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to have to once I get done with Course 4, or Course 5. Because there'll be nowhere else left to go. Other than into the throes of the Bowser. This may be a longish video, but hey. Some of those things involve this very tree. Happy Arbor Day. Yeah. Let me just remind you about the many things I used to confuse with each other. Such as Arbor Day and Labor Day. Such as... Brad Pitt and Matt Damon. And Ben Affleck. All as one person. Or, uh... <laughs> an even longer time ago. Like, perhaps, like, childhood. France and Italy. Because I knew nothing. <laughs> you know, I only knew what the almanacs could tell me. So I had all this presence of form and intelligence without the context. You know? That's what happens when you're a kid. Think you can know lots of things just by knowing, and then you don't. Gotta jump across these many platforms. Do not be fooled by the perspective. Platforms may be closer or farther than they appear. If you need help, just rely on that shadow placement. I'm glad it doesn't feel like the shadow is breaking underneath the Mario. So yeah, there's just a tree ingraining its roots. We are tree roots. The nappy roots. Making you go to sleep. Hunt and ride for red coins. Pro tip. This is not how I'll get the 100 coins because this is kind of a one-way trip to Project Red Coin or Boros Grease. I'm going to stop using that joke as soon as it stops being funny. So we have to get the red coins, and then there'll be a big, like, platform thing that only happens in this... in this sode. I want to say this star, but I think calling it an episode makes more sense. In, in game terms. Not in this video episode, which it is. But not that. A sode within a sode, if you will. I guess in my case it'd be more a webisode if you want to distinguish it from the game episode. Remember when we call things webisodes, by the way? I still keep that as a thing for, like, stuff like, um, streaming services. Calling them webisodes, except they're not specifically for the web anymore now, are they? Considering the web as a different medium, which... It's not... It's a different container of medium. Like the television. Or the... Com yeah. I don't know. We tend to use words in all the wrong ways until we find the right ways, but even then, sometimes we don't. Sometimes I just disagree with semantics and not the real content of the word. Which is why many things will appear different from me than you. This book has my name on it. Yeah, these red coins don't appear until this red coin star either, which is unusual. But that's how we do it. Let's ride the thing and try to stay on it as much as you can. Otherwise, it'll disappear and you'll have to do the whole thing over. Come with me, ghost, if you want to live, because... You're already dead. Arnold Schwarzenegger hires a ghost. The Ghost Terminator. Yeah, it's like Ghostbusters meets the Terminator. That'd be something. I mean, Terminator's gone up with, like, Robocop, so, I mean, why not? My robotic cops. Enforcing the law robotically. Yes. That's right, Chris. Project Obvious Satire is here. But what if we didn't satire? What if we didn't know? Some people say the the uh, sign of a good satire is one in which you don't understand that it's actually satire. Then it has done its job. But then it's like, <laughs> how do you get an audience for that? It's kind of like how you get an audience for a horror thing where it's just like, man, I want to be scared, but I'm expecting it. So in the case of satire, it's like, I want to be confused, but I'm expecting it. 
for. You want to be like afraid of your life on a roller coaster, but you're expecting it. Like, how do you how do you separate the experience from the expectation or the knowledge? I know not. Perhaps this haunted ride for red coins will enlighten my facts similes of my facts. Yes, of course, Chris. We're going to have to call... <laughs> Alright, this is going to sound stupid, but... Here we go. My opinions don't represent those of another person I'm about to imitate. So this level is basically have a dry red eye, try clear eyes. But no, I don't actually care for Ben's time. I'm just... It's just a long time ago, and I wanted to clear my eyes up, and... Yeah, that's what happened. Of course, it's not every day you have a big red eyeball, whose star is the simplest being in the universe! Hang on, would you excuse me for one second? I'll be right back. There's a cat can't de seem to decide if it wants to be in my room or not. It would not be the first time. <laughs> I do try to cap her being like, I want to be with you. No, wait, no, I don't. Like, within seconds, it's like, hey, man. At least he's telling me, but it, it also means he's kind of coy about it. He's just like, yeah, I kind of want to know. Not really. Like, then he realized this decision means he'll be just out of the room momentarily. It's just like, no, wait, no. It's just like, no, man. This is the one of several cats that really likes the wires. Or, well, no. The only cat out of several that likes the wires, so I'm especially stern towards him. <laughs> only if he deserves it. I'm not mean for the sake of mean. What do you think I am, some crazy evil supervillain, Chris? No. I am the true protagonist. You are all NPCs. Of my story, Chris. Yes. That's right. Protagonist syndrome. I like that. Anytime someone comes with an insult, there's like a completely direct and opposite insult. It's almost as if we're all like Newton's Law or something. Now I shall get the coins. I forgot what star I selected, but it couldn't, it couldn't have been star 5 or 6. I think I went with the tunnel, perhaps. Yeah, because the lone tree technically renders the level differently, too. With like a series of platforms to get up there that aren't normally there. So yeah, the tunnel is my star choice. I choose not to do the first one because of the big boo. And I guess this I guess the second one would have been okay too. The one where you just go up the uh the wooden plank shit. That probably would have been fine. That and yeah, star two and star three kind of exist in the same point in time in this course. The other ones though uh, no? It is weird, though, because you're used to Mario 64 being like, you can access any star as long as you can see and get it. But in this case, it's like, nah, -uh, one at a time, dipshit. Well, isn't that something special? I'm not sure I feel the need to go up there, but I, I definitely hear a spider, and he's on top of the... I can't call. I keep keep. I can't keep calling these things castles. I fail to underlie the landmarks before me. I just see them as geometric objects with colors and textures on them. I can no longer. <laughs> you know how like a picture, things are like the sum of its parts, or a picture is a thousand words. I'm like disseminating it into the thousand words and not the picture. I see all the pieces, but not the whole puzzle together. Everything broken in fragments, deconstructed, Chris. Project literature is complete. Take this. See if you can make it through here, Mario. Oh boy, random plank running. Remember when that was a cool thing to do? Which was just to lay down horizontally perfectly so yeah turns out that was just a symptom of all these challenge things people are sending around it's like ice bucket challenge set yourself on fire challenge blackout challenge it's just like 
Yeah, no. Although, if people are thinking it's a social media thing, no. That's been in just an every, all the time thing. It's called peer pressure, and I try not to submit to it whenever possible. Which gets me into trouble sometimes, believe it or not. Because then it implies that I have to be stubborn about my own viewpoints. Which, you know, then you have to determine whether it's someone else peer pressuring you, or kind of like a reverse peer pressure, when you need to be convinced of something, so... If you're wondering how peer pressure still ends up being a thing in this world, that's kind of how. Because sometimes people want the pressure, or it's for a good reason. Which means peer pressure is just a tool and not really associated with the morality, so who, who's to say? All I can tell you is I don't really do, or rather, you know, I could do drugs, but I don't abuse drugs. The main thing with drugs is not being, like, arrested for them. It's to make sure you're not addicted to them so that there's a drug you don't intend to use. That is the main thing. Not about what its contents are, whether it poisons you, whether it's unhealthy for you. The whole point of being against drugs for me is to not be addicted to them. Because I should be... I, ideally, should be able to control if I ever want to have drugs. And not the way they're out. Whether it's good for you or not. So that, that goes with, like, medicine that's actually good for you being addicting. I mean, at least that's the benefit of being good for you, but if you don't want to actually want to take it, you're just like, oh no, I need this. I think that's the case with, like, antipsychotic medicines. Where it's just like, oh, this is nice, but it's also like, why am I still doing this? It's because of the star, Chris. The star gives you the power of the, of the uh, sign of Aquarius. By the way, it's Aquarius horoscope time when I'm recording this video. Does anyone remember that, like, I'm not really a horoscope guy, even though I kind of know it tangentially, because, um, it's kind of like with personality tests. I just kind of, or just with, like, color interpretation. I just know about that weird story. It's just like, okay, everybody, like, all the horoscopes have been moved ahead a month, now and forever. And I'm just like, wait, is that really true? Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know there was a memo on these things, and it had something to do with, like, not astrology, but, like, what people discovered about certain, like, shit about Pluto. Like, astrology is gonna change just because of Pluto's definition. Probably not. I mean, it could have. What about that Planet X stuff, or Nibiru, or something? I'm, I'm more curious about exoplanets. Those are more interesting. Because I like to think about where else in the universe we could live in if we run out of space on Earth, because that's always been my solution. Well, not really solution, but an ongoing solution to problems is to just find another planet to settle on, Chris. Project Spatial Colonization. Off-world. And this is the swamp, which I advise you to get in and not out of. Bowser being the Shrek in this case. With the Bowser levels, uh, there's a, there's a star I need to go get before I actually do the Bowser fight itself. Which can be its own sort of difficult thing, too, as it turns out. I do like that we're using more Donkey Kong Country 2 music. Please use more of that. I'm quite a fan of Rare music. You know, Rare's musician. Who has been doing other things, like the Mario and Rabbids games, and, uh, I don't know if he was used in Ukulele, but there's some other shit he's involved with. I'm forgetting his name, as a matter of fact. I forget who was like... Shit. I, I'll remember eventually, but... There's like two people who do the music for Rare, and, and they're cool dudes. I could say how I'd follow them, but... Social media is kind of a choice in itself, where you just decide who you want to hang with. I've decided to make sacrifices, if only because... It's weird. Like, you think I was an activist or something, but the the real thing is just, I know the truth of humanity. Which inevitably makes me some sort of activist, in a sense. But I'm not, like, on the front lines, quote-unquote. I'm what you call an informant of the video games. Yes. So, you know. Whatever. If, if I end up somewhere else on the internet, so be it. My big, my big thing I have to worry about is just YouTube's future, honestly. 
like, is Google, as well as other companies, doing things, and you just don't know if you could stay on them doing the videos. Oh, hey, here's the log from that one lava level, remember it? Or, the one mountain level, remember it? This, uh, the most annoying part thing about the swamp stuff is actually the little tiny platforms that just slowly fall down that you have to keep jumping in order to stay up. They're like slow-moving donut lifts, Chris. Hmm, Project Calories. For worldwide morbid obesity, Chris. Feed the world, Chris. So that the zombies may feast! That's the, I don't even know if I call that a whisper voice. I'm not sure what the fuck I'm doing. Here's the sniff it! Oh shit! Unlucky! Oh well! I've taken this cut already. So, you're probably gonna see a total of maybe a few dozen deaths. Total. But spread out over this many videos is not a big deal. So, if there's like one death per video on average, it's like, yeah, okay. Especially when you're just doing, like, things you don't normally do, or would expect me to do, right? Like, I really love... I really like people who develop games, as it turns out. I like following game developers. But now I also like following mod offers even more, because... Since they don't really have a fan base, a lot of them... You can just go talk to them, like, their people be like, how is this level design? But I don't want to necessarily do that, because I have this thing about influencing the level designer's choices, and I don't actually want to do that, because it kind of takes away of how I think of this level design, even though people do that in terms of, like, you know, crowdfunding through Patreon or Kickstarter or whatever. And I'm just, like, sitting here, it's like, no, you, you do the game you want to make. I'm not, I might ask for more, like, stuff, but I'm not going to tell you what to make. And I, I don't want to be that way, even though I probably would support you, want to support you monetarily. I don't want to influence how you make the game as a reward. You understand? So, I, I don't want, like, <laughs> I don't want, like, perks that actually affect the outcome of your game. Much like with uh, that new Toe Jam and Earl game, which I kind of like. It's more, it's more roguelikey than it ever was. But I, I didn't really like how it's just like, oh no, everyone who's supported on Kickstarter has like a character moment. I'm just like, no. <laughs> I understand it when you do in the credits, even though that gets a little silly when you have that many credits. But that's what skipping buttons are for. But when it affects the content of the game, I'm like, I don't know. I'm guilty of this too, and only one game though, because I don't actually know how the developers doing now. But you know Terraria, and then when they made Starbound, I, I, I that was actually a project I kickstarted. As it turns out, I did that because I knew it was going to be an interesting thing. Even though I'm ultimately not playing it now, I still own it. And Bowser is too busy to talk to me. These, these pernicious piranha plants, hey Bowser. All toast is toast toast. We pesky plumbers. But yeah, let me just make sure I don't uh don't get too high and mighty. But yeah, no, there's a uh, I, I don't know how it works, but I'm guessing there's NPCs that generate in that game. And one of them is after me. So if you see like a Lord Game Wolf that looks like a robot with a top hat, that's probably me. You'll probably never see it, though. Assuming it's even in there. Something like that. And that's assuming it's with the species I selected, rather than just anyone generated randomly. I don't actually know. No one ever bothered to look, or maybe it's run into it. And, you know, what do you do? Like, hashtag it? Like, you can't exactly search text that's only apparent in a video. Right? Right? Oh, no. What do I expect to get out of it? Money? No, the truth is, I just need money to do the things I want to do, which is to play even more video games, even faster. That, that is my life. It is not, well, okay, maybe there are some luxuries I want, such as, maybe, you know, drones to do my work for me. But, I would make them useful, practical luxuries, rather than just being like, let's make my house gold and shiny for the sake of it. And it's like, no. <laughs> 
spend on things that matter. <laughs> Be a patron to the arts, yes. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, that's the thing, like... If someone gives you money for support, and then you just give them money back for being a patron, that just makes the money circular, and then, wow, economy works. Wow! We're just trading it back and forth. It's like, you do this, you do that, you do that, and this. These piranhas are taken from the first part of Tiny Huge Island. Only now there's no, like, dimension shifting, so there's just hilariously large piranha plants. Not to mention all the large Goombas that are going to be present around in the game. Which can be used anywhere. They're just big Goombas that have nothing to do with mention hopping. Worst of the wise, don't try to jump while there's this wind blowing, even though I'm going to get hurt. Because I will fall off, and I'll go right into the swamp. If it was lava, I would have risked it. But not this damn swamp stuff, or quicksand, so to speak. There we go! He, the last one you kill drops this key. Da, 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 da. Now we can move to the second overworld area. Woo! Bowser's Slippery Swamp. Mmm. There's something quite delicious about his swamp. Bowser's Shit Shit. His shitty swamp. For shitty people who watch my videos and don't say a thing. Ha <laughs> ha! Just kidding. I know who you are. I could just have ten fans my whole life and it won't matter. As long as I get to keep doing this. I mean, maybe I get alone and stuff, but you have a good one. Stay fresh!